Hello people, in this video we want to look at general anatomy topic, muscles. So basically muscle has come from the word mouse, the textbook says, so because it has a tail kind of thing, the tendon they are calling as a tail. So this is uh, muscle, so this muscle is, uh, uh, see here from this uh, humerus to what is this, radius, so this is a biceps muscle, is it? So <clears throat> muscle are, uh, it's a contractile tissue, it brings about movement, okay? They are regarded as the motors of body. So what is muscle? Let's write here. Muscle is contractile tissue. Okay. It brings about movement. That's it. It is regarded as motors of the body. That's enough. Now what are the parts of muscle? So what do you think are the parts of muscle guys? See each muscle has an origin and insertion. So let us say <clears throat> this muscle originates somewhere here and inserts somewhere here. But that is not the definition guys. Origin is where it remains fixed during contraction. Okay. Origin is where it remains fixed and insertion is where it moves during contraction. Moves during its contraction. So that is what is origin and insertion. You moves during its contraction. Okay. So, very important, right? So, normally we'll think it comes from there and fixes here. No, it is just where it is fixed and where it, uh, insertion is where it uh, moves during contraction. Look at this, biceps brachii. So, where do you think the origin is? Origin is here, uh, there are actually two heads, short head and long head. And where does it insert? It inserts um, in the tuberosity of radius, okay? And fascia of forearm via bicipital aponeurosis. So, two insertions and two uh, origins are there. So that's why you can say biceps is it. Short head and long head. Two heads it has. So basically um, what is uh, the origin will be there, insertion will be there and then there will be an action. What is the action? Action is supination. Supination uh, is the action. Supinates the forearm. Okay. So it supinates the forearm and when it is supine, that is it has supinated, it flexes the forearm. So it supinates then flexes you can say right. Once it is supine, then it flexes the forearm. So first it has to supinate and then has to flex looks like. So just put your hand like that, supinate it and then flex it. Okay. Then what is the nerve? For every muscle, there should be a nerve supply. For this muscle, what is the nerve supply? Musculocutaneous nerve, which is coming from the root C5. So C5 is what spinal nerve is it? Yes. Cervical. So C5 and C6. Okay. And C7 is written here. Not sure. Musculocutaneous nerve. Musculocutaneous nerve. So like this for each muscle, in uh, anatomy guys, you will have to learn the origin, the insertion, then you will have to learn the action, and then you will have to learn the <coughs> innervation. Okay, this is what you have to talk about the muscle, but these are not parts of muscle, right? And here the, sometimes uh, or, uh, origin and insertion, you can't say which is origin, which is insertion they are telling. Anyways, two parts, they are saying fleshy part, fleshy part is there which is called as the belly. It is the contractile part. Then you have the fibrous part, which is non-contractile and elastic. So, that is called as the tendon. So, what is difference between the, uh, see the entire thing is belly, uh, even the tendon is a part of the muscle looks like. So, this is the fleshy part of the muscle and this is the uh, fibrous part, that is the tendon, okay. <clears throat> fibrous part is the non-contractile and inelastic, cord-like, rope-like. Okay, when flattened, it is called aponeurosis. So, tendon itself, when flat, flattened, it becomes aponeurosis. So, somebody will ask you what is aponeurosis and what is tendon. You have to say, tendon itself, when flat, it becomes, it is called as aponeurosis. Okay, so you have palmar aponeurosis, etc. See, the same thing, here they have shown palmar aponeurosis. So, this is the tendon, palmar is longest tendon, it is flat like this, right? So, it becomes palmar aponeurosis. So, you feel your palm, okay, there you have aponeurosis. So, you should know what aponeurosis. So, it can lead to dupuytren's contracture. This is a clinical importance you should know. So, what is important uh, importance of the palmar aponeurosis? See here, thickening, all this, it will cause dupuytren's contraction. You can see here, this guy's two um, medial fingers, right? That is the little finger and the, what is this, ring finger, yeah. Those two are kind of uh, bent. So, the, that aponeurosis some problem is there. Okay. So, you have understood what parts of uh, muscle is. So, can you say the parts of muscle? Parts of muscle, uh, we have tendon, we have the belly, then we have the um, something like origin and insertion. Very good. Okay. So, now types of muscles we have to go to. Types of muscles, there are three types of muscles, guys. So, three types of muscles you should know. They are the 
striated muscles skeletal muscles sorry skeletal muscles skeletal muscle is nothing but striped striated somatic and voluntary okay so there are so many types of uh, skeletal muscles actually these are synonyms they are saying striped muscles striated muscles somatic voluntary so basically here whenever you say parts of muscle actually here they are talking about uh, skeletal muscle okay parts of skeletal muscle they are talking about fine so now where are we here types of muscles in that we have seen that there is skeletal muscle and then what else is there where are we here so you have skeletal muscles then you have smooth muscle which is i am thinking they have written as non striated then you have cardiac muscle okay three types of muscle so what you are seeing here is skeletal muscle is uh, helping the movement right it is attached to bone guys right? so how is it going is it becoming too much for you so what are the three types of muscle guys skeletal uh, smooth and cardiac very good so you have three types of muscle skeletal smooth and cardiac uh, so uh, skeletal you have seen now smooth you look this is visceral basically uh, what else where, where will you see all these visceral uh, muscles smooth muscles in stomach intestine urinary bladder these are involuntary right uh, can you tell your uh, stomach to digest the food or uh, have some action no but skeletal muscle you can control right you can make the muscle contract you can lift your biceps and triceps and all that and coming to cardiac cardiac is also kind of involuntary isn't it can you tell your heart to uh, heart muscles to behave the way you want no i'm thinking both of these are involuntary what do you say look at this this is skeletal muscles it has striations that's why the other name they said the striped striated etc here you are seeing smooth muscles they kind of look smooth yeah okay smooth muscle fibers and then here you have the cardiac muscles cardiac muscles now the main thing you should know no this kind of splitting will be there this is what you should observe in the microscope can you see that that one is going and it is becoming two this is very important it is um, that is how you will identify cardiac muscle even under the microscope see this is the skeletal muscle the way we have drawn in the lab in uh, histology okay so again you can see here skeletal muscles those striations and all what you saw no that will have lot of explanation some sarcomere then uh, you have some z line i band a band there's way too much complication that you have to know okay how this contracts skeletal muscle contracts we told you right you can control how it contracts so this and all is yes, very much in detail you should know this is also skeletal muscle now let us look at smooth muscle guys so look at this uh, smooth muscle what do you see in this there are no striations okay this is the way we have drawn in the lab in our lab uh, the smooth muscle in our records spindle shaped cells almost in all diagrams that you draw right you will draw something like this okay that will indicate muscle and it will actually indicate the smooth muscle so if you remember for smooth muscle the way uh, they have shown here the same thing you will draw something like this i'm drawing here something like this you will draw for smooth muscle and inside that you will put one nucleus see this is how you will do you will draw smooth muscle so where will it be stomach intestine urinary bladder etc they are held together by cell junction says now we have to go to cardiac actually one one of the notes uh, i have made says here that it is cardiac cardiac is also type of skeletal okay let's see this this is cardiac muscle the way i used to identify it you know i would look for this kind of branching see here you can see one is coming and becoming two that kind of a pattern that that uh, helps me identify not sure if that is what you have to look for that is the cardiac muscle then what else so ha, do we know about cardiac muscle this is how we have drawn in the uh, lab see every time there is this uh, split that is happening right this is also cardiac muscle what else we know about cardiac muscle yeah this is the cardiac muscle we told you striations are there then junction is there cardiac muscle branching central nucleus okay so what are the uh, three types of muscles skeletal muscle smooth muscle and cardiac muscle so what do you know about uh, cardiac muscles let us see it is there in the heart very good then fibers are branched yes so you saw that uninucleated then uh, faint light and dark bands are present what else nerve supply is to autonomic nervous system you don't control your heart rate it is autonomic autonomic nervous system the blood supply will be a lot for the heart muscles that is uh, coronary arteries will be there right then these will have rapid contractions they never get 
to, uh, tired they never get fatigued right and they are involuntary smooth muscles also they do not get fatigued they are involuntary when it comes to skeletal they are voluntary and they get fatigued you cannot go on exercising isn't it what else you should know guys we told you that this um, skeletal muscles or the striated striated muscle will have this striated striated so the striated muscle will have contractile un, un, unit contractile unit we told you right sarcomere and uh, some bands will be there dark bands a bands you remember this this is very important guys so uh, this entire thing you will have to learn separately but quickly to tell you this is uh, the z line okay and there is a a band which is uh, between these z lines there is a a band i band is including the z line and from one z line to z line they have called it as a sarcomere very important it's a contractile unit they are saying in the middle whatever is the head zone they are saying so the way it works is you have actin myosin etc right <clears throat> and these will slide right what will slide i'm thinking this will slide and it will get attached there in 12th you have already completed this right so you have the <clears throat> actin is thin it moves and what is this myosin myosin won't move is it so this is some sliding filament theory for the contraction to happen quite uh, interesting right you have already seen this i think in your 12th okay just look here the a band actually is from here to here right this is the a band you can see here from here to here is what they have marked this is actually the myosin length and the myosin doesn't move right it's the actin that moves so this a band is actually kind of fixed this is the kind of thing they are showing the actin thin filaments move due to myosin due to myosin but actin is the one that moves so if if that is the way that uh, skeletal is moving then how is smooth moving look at this table here smooth actually doesn't have troponin skeletal has troponin and tropomyosin smooth doesn't have then how does it move basically the entire muscle bundle contracts as a single unit in smooth muscle that is called as a syncytium this is what we have studied right uh, molecular basis for smooth muscle contraction there is some calcium calmodium complex right um, so this is what you have to know calcium calmodium complex look at the sequence here they have written the sequence here stimulation will be there increased uh, calcium 2 plus they are saying intracellular is it then there is a formation of calcium calmodium complex this activation of light chain myosin kinase enzyme phosphorylation of myosin binding of actin and myosin this is happening binding of actin myosin is happening contraction of muscle activation of light chain myosin phosphate enzyme dephosphorylation of muscle relaxation of muscle okay that became a little too much for general anatomy i'm thinking okay so basically contractile unit sarcomere how smooth muscle contracts everything we have discussed okay so now let's move on guys to <clears throat> neuromuscular junction so basically this is a very important thing neuromuscular junction so basically you know that there is a nerve right which is supplying the information to this muscle this is the muscle right to which this nerve is giving the innervation so whenever nerve says contract then muscle should contract right so how does this happen this entire thing as actually neuromuscular junction a lot of details you should know about it here they are showing you nerve and muscle so here you have the presynaptic membrane then you have the postsynaptic membrane in between you have the synapses then here are the vesicles which will release so uh, acetylcholine has to come and acetylcholine is the one that is being received by the muscle isn't it so that and all you should know so once the nerve tells only the muscle will contract and only when the nerve says the muscle to contract all this uh, contraction unit contractile unit all this works only once the nerve will tell the muscle okay so what are the importance you know you should know of all this that you have learned there, is, there are diseases like muscle uh, nerve neuromuscular problems myasthenia gravis so this is a neuromuscular disease that causes weakness in the skeletal muscles especially at the end of the day right after they do work so how what will it give these people you will try to retain the acetylcholine in the, them okay then there are so many other problems so this and all how will you treat you will have to give choline esterase inhibitors such as neostigmine etc you want to have the acetylcholine for longer period in the synaptic cleft they will give you a spotter like this and ask what it is it could be myasthenia gravis and there are a lot of other disorders that you should know skeletal muscle myopathy 
muscular dystrophies, myasthenia gravis, Lambert-Eaton syndrome, mitochondrial myopathy, etc., etc. Then there can be paralysis. Guys, we are looking at clinical importance. Actually, we are back from looking at the textbook to the topic we were looking at clinical importance. Then <coughs> paralysis can be there. Muscular spasm can be there. Uh, atrophy of muscles can be there. If you don't use the muscle, right, it will go into atrophy. Atrophy means it will reduce in size, number, everything, right? Then, actually size. Size, if it reduces, it is uh, atrophy. Because if it reduces in number, it becomes hypoplasia, I am thinking, right? Then, that is called as wasting. You can say wasting. Then, all this you should know. These are the clinical importance. Okay. And for cardiac muscle, you should know. Cardiac muscle, if there is no su proper uh, supply of blood, what will happen? They will go into ischemia. Mm, that is myocardial infarction. Okay. We have a myogenic heart. Right. It is. It can uh, beat by itself. It creates its electrical uh, activity and it beats by itself. Correct. So, Cardiac uh, muscle, that is what is the speciality. So, our heart has sinoatrial node. So, that will give the impulse for the heart. What do you call it? it? It is the one that tells the heart to beat at a certain rate, right? So, this is a myogenic heart. So, that's it people. In this video, we wanted to look at this general uh, anatomy topic of muscles. So, muscle is called so because it has a kind of a belly and a tail like a mouse, right? Uh, basically, it's a contractile tissue. It brings about movement. The parts of muscle, you know, there is an origin, insertion. Origin is actually fixed and insertion is the part where it moves, uh, it uh, which helps it, uh, it moves during contraction. There's a fleshy part which is a belly and there's a flat fibrous part which is called as tendon. I mean, not uh, very flat, but if it is very flat, it's called aponeurosis. This is more like a rope string kind of thing, tendon. Then there is, uh, the, every muscle will have an action and uh, innervation. You have to tell the name of the nerve, okay? That, that actually parts of muscle is for skeletal muscle, okay? The parts of muscle that you saw. Now, there are three types of muscles, skeletal muscle, smooth muscle and cardiac muscle. Skeletal muscle is voluntary, you control it like this one. You want to lift your hand, you don't want to lift your hand, the muscle will help, right? Uh, then smooth muscle is where uh, it is there in your stomach, etc. It is involuntary. Cardiac is also kind of skeletal, it's striated, but it is also involuntary. You can't control it. Muscle contraction, uh, how does it happen? In uh, striated, you have the sarcomere and uh, uh, all those... Uh, uh, troponin etc. You, it's a con you have contractile unit etc. Smooth you have a calcium calmodium complex. There also actin myosin will help. Okay. Actin actually uh, slides. Myosin makes it slide but myosin actually doesn't kind of move. Okay. Then nerve supply to skeletal muscle you have seen and there is something called as neuromuscular junction. You should know the details of how exactly the nerve sends the impulse to the muscle. The clinical importance of muscles we have seen that there, uh, there could be myasthenia gravis, paralysis, atrophy, wasting and um, the heart is myogenic heart. So, our sinoatrial node will uh, make the heart beat, isn't it? So, that's it guys uh, in this general anatomy topic on muscles. Bye-bye.